Hey everybody, how you doing? It's your brother from another mother, Brother Mays. That's right, live with the Brother Mays show. Hey, I told you I was coming back, man, and I'm coming back strong. Now, of course, this time around, I, I have to say, uh, you love to interview people, but you don't want to interview them in the state of situation that they're in as we speak. And this young lady is a uh, has been interviewed by me before, Miss Marquita Owens of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Good old college friend of mine of course i call her like my sister and everything but she is also the ceo and of course the owner of blueprint studio there in uh there in tulsa oklahoma and as a matter of fact a cycling studio and uh man uh how are you marquita uh under certain kinds of conditions i am great <laughs> Now, for anybody that anybody that knows me, I like to put a subject to everything. And of course, the title of this show tonight is actually called Healthy Not Healthy. And one of the reasons why is because I, Marquita is now a COVID uh, recipient, if I may say, uh, just because she's been quarantined uh, after a recent episode where it, one of her clients uh has became positive so she's taking the all the precautions so we're going to just talk about this tonight uh, a couple of things that i really want to focus on Marquita, Marquita is first of all how are you feeling i uh, actually surprisingly good <laughs> like i don't have covid <laughs> right well i mean and, and here's the thing if for anybody that doesn't know Marquita was one of the the, the, the one of the uh people that i had interviewed uh back in a couple few about a few months ago but one of the things that one of the reasons I interviewed is because she had did a documentary of her her uh, journey uh, in regards to her losing weight, her her body transformation, and all this happened over a period of 366 days instead of 365, and that's why she goes as goes as the 366 Fit Mom on Instagram. So I'm going to allow her to kind of just explain a little bit to not only you guys but really explain to me what was what really happened i mean you 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 uh you get a phone call as you were telling me from one of your clients so kind of go from there yeah so it was on a friday i'm getting ready to um do my last class of the the evening uh and i get a call and they say that they had um covid uh just tested positive for covid and i was like oh my goodness i mean you know the whole thing of are you okay blah 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 so uh they were like they had flu symptoms and whatsoever and to me it, it stunned me because i had just seen them um at the beginning of the week um a, a couple of classes they had been to um and for me, whenever people come into my studio, I do all the safety precautions. But besides that, I'm crazy. Before COVID, I was crazy when it came to um, people being sick. So people know that I'm on top of, you know, making sure that you're not ill coming in. So she didn't have a temperature that day, um, didn't display any signs. We wear masks too. So uh so i was just kind of running through my head well maybe I, I don't have COVID. maybe she got COVID after i seen her i mean but i went ahead and got tested my first test um was a, a, a negative but being that i'm around people all the time i didn't feel comfortable teaching a another another class until i knew um uh for, for sure, for sure. Um, so I took a second test and the second test said that I was um, positive. So that's where um, uh, I am now at, at home quarantining because I ended up having a, a, a positive results. Um, the only symptoms that I was having was just a little nasal stuffiness um, first thing in the morning. But I mean, that's something that I've always had this time of the year. So for me, it didn't scream COVID. It just screamed, um, maybe you're getting a, a sinus infection like you normally have get around this time of the year. Now, so that was one of my question, not to cut you off, but that was actually one of my first questions is that what was the major difference you encountered since testing positive um, health wise? Uh, health wise is mm -hmm. um, um, just the nasal congestion, but which that wasn't 
like nothing to me too big mm -hmm. the the major thing was being tired um i noticed mm -hmm. that um i have been getting tired um just out the out the blue you know mm -hmm. i would get mm -hmm. um tired and then i'm um, doing a workout my endurance um mm -hmm. was super low and then whenever i got done with the workout i was depleted like mm -hmm. like i had ran a marathon and i'm usually the person after a 45 minute class like hey mm -hmm. how are you guys doing are you guys good and <laughs> to to do like uh, maybe four songs and feel like super ran down that mm -hmm. was like a yeah something i i got something but i mean right. if this is what COVID feels like you know right in a, in a healthy body you know I'll take it, but that was like the 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 big thing for me was feeling um super tired or if I was stressing, it mm. made me feel um like all my energy was zapped. So wow. stress wow. and um stress and um uh doing any kind of cardio kind of zapped all my my energy. Okay. Now that that brings me to say this because I want to kind of back up and give people the storyline. You hit just recently had just opened up your dream shop we're talking yeah. about the i want to say this correctly the blueprint the yeah blueprint. tell us about tell us about how things were going because I, I know i would follow along and i'm looking i'm 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 like man she's this place is bigger than what i expected it to be because i was looking at all your pictures and then i was seeing people work out and all that kind of tell us about because you were on this this rise i mean you was everybody talking about the blueprint and next thing you know you get right COVID. it just it's, basically just took off and what's cra the crazy thing is is right before um right before um i got the blueprint we did an interview and this wasn't even in the the works of it so right right, I, I, right i remember you speaking uh like something good was going to happen or whatever else but fast forward to probably not too much longer after our interview uh the blueprint was birth you know so uh two months in i'm i'm two months into to having the the blueprint studio studio and business was was growing um memberships were starting to to grow um getting people in on a consistent basis getting people who were like oh, i'll never cycle fall in love with cycling you know to me yeah, that's yeah, yeah. like the 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 major best part part of it all you know because there's been plenty of people who have seen me be a cycle teacher for years now but have never rolled with me but now they bought a membership to to ride with me because they found a, a love for it and they've seen that it's been beneficial to their their body i've had clients um have that have lost um in two weeks five pounds to uh people who have been there with me for a month uh that have dropped weight dramatically so it was going and, and i'm still going to say is going well it's just this minor you know setback so 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 kind of talk about that a little bit because now you're getting you're getting you had your friends that were joining you uh, joining and supporting you your family supporting you kind of talk about from the family standpoint um what was their initial reaction and and their support because Here's the thing that I noticed when I was watching one of your posts, I saw that you said my kids or my husband sent me this picture and they were and they're real serious. <laughs> and it was the it was the taping, like as if you went to a crime scene and said, do not enter uh, from the uh, from the inside of your house. So kind of talk about that and how they're they're dealing with this. <laughs> Uh, they've actually been super, super good and super supportive, uh, super uh, strict at times. Uh, uh, yeah, because I get this picture that they're sliding you food under the door or something. Well, well they'll they'll come in and they they want me to stay far away from the, the door. Um, uh, I know the very first day uh, they were rationing uh, food to me a little bit, but my husband's uh, like, "Hey, I don't want to hear you say that you gained weight over COVID, so I'm trying to oh feed you how you normally." God. <laughs> how you normally eat <laughs> now that now that's that goes into this that goes into a question i'm going to ask you because you already had from a nourish standpoint you have your own juices and so yeah. a lot of your own juices that you make and you sell they help in a way so uh, yeah how, so how has that and talk about that a little how has that helped you with your taking your own juices 
Um, I, I would, um, it's funny that you asked because I just was doing a, a, a live earlier and telling people mm -hmm. I believe that's what, one of the reasons why um, I, I probably haven't had any uh, symptoms or while I'm doing so well um, mm -hmm. with my cardio health. Yeah, it's affected me a little bit, but mm -hmm. to me, there's one juice that I have is called um, Bold and Bougie and it has beets in it. Beets help your cardio health. Mm -hmm. So it helps your, your heart health um, too. So it's really important to, to, to drink it right before you do any kind of cardio um, workout. So for me, I feel like all the stuff that I've done um, before COVID has prepared my body for, for right now. For so, what you're doing. yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, that's very interesting. Cause I remember in the last conversation um, I had spoke to you, I was doing a lot of changes with my health. And since then, I have been juicing. I have literally, I've lost more than 27, 28 pounds in almost two months. At, uh, in, in like, to the point where I felt like as long as I stayed on this regimen, I'm yeah. going to get to my goal, you know, within a period of four months. And, and I, I was doing great. So, so with that being said, have you seen an increase in people saying, hey, I want to buy more juices or i mean how is business being run even though you're not there i mean kind of um, give us right now, it's, uh, basically since i've just been under um covid mm -hmm. quarantine everything is just kind of laying uh low i got a lot of people who were um buying from me all the way up until um mm -hmm. quarantine that mm -hmm. can't wait to get the normal juices that they um, yeah. uh, usually get. I would say for, for me, it made it to where now I can uh, put together packages and, and, and stuff. So it was kind of like a blessing in disguise too, to where I could kind of fall back a little bit and focus mm -hmm. on the juice business and right. have it more, more, not that it wasn't organized, but to where, um, now it's going to work for me even better because to me i'm a product of my um i'm a testimony of my yes my product, yes a testimony you know, exactly for, for not only with with fitness but the way that i've lived my my life and how you know COVID affected my body so i mean i'm a a, a testimony to to everything that i've done so so being quarantined, you know, a lot of people lose different types of liberties, you know, things that they sometimes <laughs> take advantage. So so my question is to you, what was some of the liberties that you that you lost immediately? And you said, oh, my God, I can't wait. Until walking around, <laughs> Walk, walking around the house. So you understand what it's like being a little bit of a prisoner a little bit, you know, you're looking yeah, outside yes. the gate like this. Yes. And I am the type of person that I don't know how to be still. Uh, right. It kills me to, to have to be still. I feel like a caged uh, animal right, right, oh right now. So it's like, it's one thing to be quarantined in your house, but to be quarantined in a in a room, and if you crack the door open, your family's like, "What are you doing? What are you?" Yep, <laughs> you know? yep, yep, yep. You know, you sneak oh to be going out whenever they're gone out the house and spraying it back down. So I would say having to be still that was yeah. something really tough for me because I I don't know how to rest. I don't know how to rest, and this is making me be in a season of of rest. So <laughs> this, I can I can definitely uh, concur with you on that because being in my situation, I'm always up, running around, whatever the case may be. Of course, there's times I can't even get up and walk ten feet because of my <laughs> situation, and I'm like, you know, my mom's looking at me like, "What's wrong?" And I'm like, "You just don't understand," you know. But at the end of the day, I, I totally get it. Kind of, kind of take me back a little bit because I recently had a friend of mine that lives in St. Louis, Missouri, and unfortunately she passed. She passed oh. to COVID, and, and so oh, sorry. I, 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 no, no, no. Here's the thing: it it, it kind of tied in a little bit to some of the the pre-existing conditions that she had had. Um, she was dealing with uh, cancer prior to she just mm -hmm. came off of that battle, but you know her body was weak. And, and of course, um, she attained it from her brother. And um, of course, her brother, who is still alive, uh, he, he talked to me about some things. 
But one of the things that he did mention, too, was about the fears that, that he faced uh, when first knowing that he had COVID and even some of the things that she faced. Uh, and he and she talked to him about kind of expressed to people uh, the fears that 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 came across, uh, if any, you know, that came across your mind once you learned that you were positive. Um, I said, I would say for me, I wasn't, I was never afraid of getting COVID. My belief was, I thought that, and it may have been naive on my part. I mm. always thought that my bo body was healthy enough to handle it. My lifestyle, mm -hmm. um, was gonna allow my body to, to, to handle it. Um, mm -hmm. that was, um, for me so i never was scared like i said uh, of getting it um uh, because i'm always self-medicating uh, myself with mm -hmm. um elderberry turmeric you right, know right, juices right. And, and all of that my biggest scare came from um probably business wise you know um i didn't want anyone thinking that um i was running my business un unsafe, unsafe you know right. so mm -hmm. that was probably the the biggest um, mm -hmm. worry for, for me because I, I know how I am and I know what kind of environment that I wanted mm -hmm. people to be in. So mm -hmm. to be transparent and have to mm -hmm. tell people that my business, the business owner had COVID, I think that was the biggest disappointment or I felt like a sense of ownership or embarrassment mm -hmm. um, for it. Even though it was something that I couldn't control, right. it just automatically was something that made me feel um, defeated at mm -hmm. the moment. It was like worse than me having COVID. It was just, mm -hmm. you know, just felt like a sense of being defeated. Is there any protocols, you being a business owner and, and understanding what you're dealing with, uh, I can only imagine, you know, some of the things that you've been thinking about, but what are some of the protocols, if any, that you have to go back through just to get back to being being normal uh, as a business owner. I mean, because obviously you want to get out there that hey, uh, we're safe. You know, this is not necessarily here at my business. Um, it was an isolated situation. I mean, kind of kind of tell us about that. Right. Um, well, pretty much I was doing everything um, a business was supposed to be doing. Like I said, when clients come in, they have to remain six feet apart. Um, my bikes in the, the room, they're six feet apart. When people come in, they get uh, sanitized and they get their temperatures checked. Mm -hmm. They can't remove their mask until they get to their stations. Whenever they're done at uh, cycling, they wipe off their bikes and then I go back and re-sanitize their, their bikes and then we spray the room with the COVID killing so solution so everything mm -hmm. that a business is supposed to be doing I was doing it it was just you know something somebody ended up having it um they probably didn't know they had it and mm -hmm. you know no it, it's perfectly it, it's perfectly understandable yeah. uh, I mean I would think that you know because even with the gym that I belong to it was one of the first things that I, I thought of. I said, okay, I wonder their cleanliness. You know, what is it that, what mm -hmm. are their protocols? And what I was very uh, uh, satisfied about was that when I walked in, I mean, in every part of the gym, it, it re-explained what they do, what they do on a daily uh, right. like a timeline to make you feel secure. So that, that really made me feel good. At the yeah. Time. And that's well, what a lot of people say. They're they're like, Marquita, we feel safe at your place. Like we feel super safe because we watch everything that you do. And like I said, before COVID, I was crazy. My clients were scared to even cough <laughs> or to, to sniff. It was well, like this this girl. Well you had this over. launch. You, you had this launch of this business and I was looking at the pictures and everything and I said, Man, I said, let me just get in my car and just drive down there because I, I said, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. And I'm still hold me to hold me to that. Yeah. Please do. Uh so I said, I'm gonna do this and everything. Cause even I got family there in Tulsa and and uh, I was telling them about you know about your uh about your uh, blueprint studio and and my cousin, one of the first things that he said to me, he goes, Man, I already know about that. That's down there in the old uh black district. And I was like, Yes, I was yes. like, 
I was like, uh, I said, Black so you Wall know about, I, I said, yeah, I said, you, you know about, uh, the blueprint. He said, uh, huh. he said, that's that crazy lady. And I was like, huh? I said, what you, I said, hold up. That crazy lady. We know they, she just, she works out all the time. People be talking about, you know, she's, she's on Instagram and this and that. I said, so, you know, three, six, six fit mommy. So, uh, huh. He's those, cause my girlfriend actually follows her. And so I was laughing because she, when I talked to her, she was like, Oh yeah, she said that girl bad. I said, "Well, do me a favor." I said, "That's a good friend of mine from college." I said, "But go back and watch the video that that we did before." And uh, she did. She came back. She said, "Yeah, I'm coming now." I don't know if she came. What's her name? What's that? Oh, the, uh, Sh uh, Sh uh, Shanika. Shanika is her name. Yes. Not yet. Not, Not yet? yet. You ain't get. Not well, here's the thing. If you you this is how you know Shanika. Shanika always she's always had a blonde little strip in her head. And, okay. and yeah, she, she keeps that blonde little stripping head. I thought it was like a signifying a skunk or something, but it was no, but but it's funny because you know, here it is. I she keeps this little blonde little stripping head, but she's cute as she can be, probably about five two and do what do what you can. But all with all that being said, uh I know she's gonna come, she's gonna have to because yeah, I, I made a bet with her, so don't worry yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah, people know I'm crazy, so but yeah. I'll take it, I'll take it. <laughs> Well, no, it's really good because, you know, when we talk about when we talk about not only your business, we talk about uh, uh, people coming or whatever the case may be, especially for African-Americans. I mean, for you to open up in a historically black area that's not just known locally, but known. I'm going to say worldwide, because yeah. you can't talk about Tulsa, Oklahoma without talking about what happened years and years ago but especially in that area how proud did that make you feel that you could do you could do this not only for yourself but for others and be a part of history oh man it made me feel so much joy to be a, a black woman on black wall street yes, having yes, a, yes. a black business Yes. I mean, it, it it don't get no it don't get no better than that, <laughs> no better. It, it, no especially better. during times like this, and you know, and here we yeah. are coming up on an election, and and you know the the just to get the black vote is is crazy yeah. uh, itself. I mean, I, I I you know the atmosphere itself um, uh, of just knowing that you're part of this history. I mean, for me to know that you are part of this history makes me feel really good. And I, like I told you, I'm a great big supporter of what you do. Cause I think you're, you're, you're changing people's lives and you change yeah. people's lives. But before we get out of here, there's a, there's a question that I love to always ask, ask, ask amongst all my clients. Uh, I like to say clients, but of course my guests, um, faith is everything. And it's been, and we talked about this before that faith is everything to you. And of course, any particular scriptures or encouraging words that you would you be willing to share that has been that driving force for you um, during this time of quarantine? Uh, for for me, I mm. read this daily devotional called mm. uh, Jesus uh, Calling. Uh, uh, to me, it is probably the most prophetic thing that I mm. could <laughs> read it it's always on point and on yeah. time on a daily basis yes. for me so it's the thing that's been getting me um through keeping me um encouraged because every day it has something that uh feeds my soul and it's uh just going over trusting him and trusting mm -hmm. his plan and you know uh, not depending on self and worrying about what other people say, because like I said, for, for me, mm -hmm. with this whole COVID thing, I went into a whole state of um, feeling guilt and shameful, like mm -hmm. uh, the, the COVID belonged to, to me. So just was worrying about what other people were going to, to think about me and my business. Mm -hmm. But this right here, <laughs> <laughs> It it, it it made me toughen up. It Amen. Made, me, Amen. made me tough toughen up and know that you know his opinion is the the only opinion, and you know the the promise that he promised me. He he didn't lie. You know it's he's just working some things things out, and maybe this happened to where I could educate people on what COVID looks like in a in a healthy body. You know what what it looks like in a in a healthy body. We see it from a a, a sick point, you know. Mm -hmm. But 
it's disguised its body. Uh, it, it's disguised itself in, in my body. And I could be, you know, had I not been an advocate for my own health, I could be out there spreading it amongst right. a, a right. lot of people. So it happened to me so I could educate, you know, other people. So this keeps me, me humble. It keeps mm. me, you know, in the process, you know, that, that I'm in. I, I'm going to go ahead and ask this because I'm watching your videos. I saw you was, um, you were cycling one day and I want to say you were cycling in your, in your, uh, in some flip flops or whatever. No, I, I, look, I probably was in shoes. You was in some <laughs> shoes. It looked like you were cycling some flip flops. I said, this girl, what, 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 what is she doing? But, but, but it made me, it made either way, maybe I saw you on the black on the back of your porch area. It's like, uh, so I take yeah. it to you. It's like, like you were right next to your bedroom or whatever. But here's the thing that got me is that I got to think, I said, I wonder if somebody called her and said, girl, I need a class. I, I need a session. <laughs> you said, forget it. I'm going to go ahead and do this. And you filmed it or you were going through. And I said, I wonder if she's trying to run some classes from virtually, because if that's the case, she's going to put that other business out of business that you see people. I, I don't even want to throw them out there because they ain't paying you. Pe Pel Peloton or what is it called? Peloton or whatever it is. Anyway, they ain't paying you. But but there's I said, if she. To eat. Huh? I said, there's enough out here for all of us to eat. Exactly. And then I said, I said, she's probably running a class virtually. Mm. And, and she get and she gonna get away with it. And so I just got to thinking. I said, "That's probably Mar uh, that's probably Marquita." My God, <laughs> did, did you did you ever think? Well, I have to ask a question. Did you ever feel like you know what? Let me just put a camera right here, and everybody can join me on Zoom, and we good to go, or or what? Uh, I get people ask all the all the time. Uh, whenever I was in the studio, I would run run the classes live. But I mean, through COVID, now it's birthed it to where um, as soon as I get back in the studio, I'll have it to where people can tap in and buy the uh, the class to where there I'm not go. giving it away for free. Now there I'm able go. to to make some money. So so some good good has been birthed out of yeah. out of COVID. You know, oh, so making ways for people to to ride with me who've been wanting to ride with me that aren't here in, in Tulsa. So yeah. Well, well if anybody is just joining this interview because obviously um you know i have been on for these last almost a half an hour now talking to ceo of course owner of blueprint miss marquita owens and uh she's a cycling instructor there in the tulsa uh, oklahoma area uh black wall street area to be exact and of course uh, with that being said she was a victim of uh, of COVID. So she's been explaining to us a little bit about her experiences and as far as what she's been dealing with and everything. Is there anything particular that you would like to say to the audience uh, before we go that we haven't yet to cover? Um, I would just say, don't be afraid of being tested. I feel like um, that's one reason why people don't get tested is because mm -hmm. they're um, afraid. That will I would say that was probably one of the reasons why I probably never wanted to get tested. My blood pressure, even <laughs> thinking about it, like yeah. went up, up through the the, uh, the roof. But I mean, the test is not that bad. Yeah. Um, get get tested. Be an advocate for your your mm -hmm. health and um, other people's health um, because what you may think are symptoms that you always have. Um, I'm a living testimony that, Hey, that's not always true. You, I haven't ran a temperature this whole time and wow. temperature is one wow. thing that they, they've said, I haven't had any major symptoms. So, you know, COVID has snuck its way inside my body. So I would hate for someone to have the same symptoms that, that I have mm. and just brush it off as, um, it just being a common cold or or allergies i would say we're not in a season to where we can take this um lightly it may rest in your body easy but may kill someone someone else oh so well i just said think it well, well said one last thing what is the first thing that you're going to do <laughs> once you come out of this quarantine go in the studio and get on a bike <laughs> I, 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 had a, I had a feeling that you was going to say that. I was thinking, uh, well, maybe I'll, I'll come out and hug my husband and, and, and my kids or something. You know, uh, you tell Steady, tell, uh, listen, tell uh, uh, Ready Freddy, my buddy, hey, look, 
he need to hold you down just for a little bit. You exactly. Know? <laughs> it's all good. I feel, like, I feel like I need to get on the bike, play a good <laughs> gospel song, and just cry my eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> well, Leandria, Leandria, uh, what's that? There's a song by Leandria, and I can't even think of the name of it, but she is, it's, it's amazing. And one of my friends, uh, Miss TT, had just sent it to me the other day. And um, I, I just, I think it's her most popular song out right now, and I can't even think of the name of it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ah. You have to send it to me. Yeah, I'll I'll send it to you because that puts me in a place as we speak, and 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 especially during all this. But first, I just want to thank you for joining my show tonight, and just just being you, girl. Like I told you, whether I'm talking to you or not, I watch your videos. You encourage me. I I I'd said it before. You you this was going to turn into something major, and I still feel that something else is going to happen. It's going to even go to a whole nother level. So, yeah. Out, okay. <laughs> I know the hey. last, last time I was with you, that's what you said. <laughs> Blueprint was in the making. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Well, hey, you know, maybe you can put me in a book someday in the back and say, okay, Marlon Gray's or whatever. <laughs> it's all good. It's, it's all good now. I, I'm going to keep on bringing you on my show and it's going to keep elevating as we go mm -hmm. and everything. But hey, once again, thank you for joining us tonight. And of course, um, you know, Mar Mar Marquita, God's love, God's speed. That um, mm -hmm. get better, and um, I'm looking forward to us doing this again, but for other reasons. Okay? I know, right? <laughs> for other reasons. All right, young lady, you have a good one. And guys, listen, if you want to join the uh, join me live with Brother May show each and every, uh, and and I've changed it first and third Wednesdays of every month after this show comes back out. Uh, please join me and just join me at live with Brother May's. Uh, dot com uh to to get any updates and again i'm your brother from another mother brother maze i'm always doing what i do so peace <laughs>